Welcome back to My Hero Academia Anime Review, Episode 2. This one reviewing the second season of the series and the first four episodes of the current season of the series, Season 3. Yep. Yeah, recently when I was visiting my brother, I managed to finish up the entire series. Yep. Got the entire thing up today. So now, I'm just waiting for the next episode to air. Now, in Season 2... This one covered the chapters of 22 to 70. Yes. So pretty much, this one covered exactly about, I'd say about three arcs while starting up the uh, fourth arc. Yeah, it covers the UA Sports Festival arc, which in the manga took up 21 chapters. Actually, 23 chapters. And it was Verse Hero Killer arc, which was exactly 15 chapters. The final exams arc, which was 10 chapters, and the start of the forest training arc. Yeah, that's pretty much as far as they got with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the UA Sports Festival arc, I gotta say, this is the first arc that introduced the character of Endeavor to the anime. Voiced by Patrick Stoltz. And I gotta say, the guy does a good job of voicing him. Oh, in case you're wondering why my bedspread looks different, because, well, I decided to replace the bedspread of my, 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 my bed for over a decade with this current one, because my, my mother got me this for my birthday recently. Just in case some of you are wondering. Now, in the case of this current season, now, in, now in, in this first arc, UA Sports, from what I can tell from reading from the manga, there's virtually, like, very little change. I don't think as much of change at all. I mean, overall, the deciding factor, the winner of it, just pretty much wins exactly the way he does in the manga. I don't remember any change. Uh, the Calvary battle I thought was interesting, especially in the anime. It's just interesting in the manga. Yeah, where they had Team Deku, even though it's, I think it's Team Madoya, which was consists of Deku, um, Your Gravity, the, the guy with Dark Shadow, I don't remember the character's name, and a uh, character from the Supply class, which, that was interesting. Yes, and this is one thing I enjoyed about the Calvary battle in the anime, especially in the manga, of how interesting it is, and it made use of all these characters working together as a team. Which kind of makes me wonder, though, like, why can't they do stuff like this, some, uh, stuff like this more in the future? Like, characters figure to work together like something like this in the future. Where well, we got that in the in the verse hero arc we had well, Deku, um, Endeavor Son, Bakto, and Ingenium, who is well in the anime the class rep. Yeah. They got a chance to take on the hero killer and they beat him, though when when they when uh, it was started here he took on a pro hero and nearly killed the guy. Endeavor show uh not Endeavor, uh Ingenium showed up, though he got beat and then Deku showed up and he delayed, uh, he was only there just, he was not there just to beat Derek. He just wanted to delay him as long as possible for Pro Heroes to show up. So he sent a text, just location where he was. And only about, excuse me, about one person showed up, and it was back to Endeavor's son. He was the one who showed up. Eventually the other Pro Heroes showed up after they had already defeated the Hero Killer, which I got handed to the anime. They made the Hero Killer interesting. And even the manga, they made interesting as well. Let me look up who actually, who's the voice of him. Um, I know they did introduce in, I think it was in this arc, they did have All for One, which is voiced by John Sweeney. Now, those of you who watch One Piece, this is the same guy who voiced Sir Crocodile from One Piece. Yeah, he was the first of the seven warlords introduced in the actual anime. Yep, he, he voiced him, he did the dub voice, which... I gotta say, he did a really good job, and he you don't get to see a full picture of him. Yeah, not until the falling arc. When you, it's not until the hideout raid arc when you get a chance to see the guy, you know, fully. Uh-huh. Let me look up and see who voiced the hero killer. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, in the case of the UA Sports arc, this is kind of, well, the show's version of a tournament. 
That's actually what the, what the thing was. A tournament. You even got a chance to characters fight each other. The only other series I've seen, basically, that have had this is all five Dragon Ball series. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, uh, Dragon Ball Z Kai, even though it's just a rethink of Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball Super. Yep, all five of those series. Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, Yu Hakushu, Hunter x Hunter, uh, Fairy Tail had one of these. Yep, Fairy Tail had one. That was interesting. Even the fan service thing, I thought it was funny. I'd say about a lot of the series I've watched have generally had it in their own tournament. Let's see. Yeah, Alpha One's voice by. Um, Tamora, basically, who's kind of like the main villain in the series. Well, most of it anyways. He's voiced by Eric Vale, which... Those of you remember him from Dragon Ball, like, who did he voice in Dragon Ball? Well, he voices Trunks. The, well, I think he voices the... Yeah, he voices the, the the kid trunks. He also voices Sanji from One Piece. Let's see, what else? Yeah, that's basically it. He voiced only voiced a couple characters, but yeah, it's always great to hear um the guy who voices Sanji. He does a great job doing him. Yeah, he gives him a very raspy voice. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'll talk about her in a minute. Let's see if I can find him here. The Hero Killer. Here we go. Staten Hill Killer is voiced by Robert McConnum. Yep. He voiced Goten from DBZ. Jalal from Fairy Tail. Ryan O'Brien from uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, he's the guy who turns the cloth sign. Yeah, that, that's who his voice actor is. Let's see. He also voiced Mystican, who is Jalal's uh, counterpart from. Uh, Eteros. He also did voiceover in Full Alchemist Brotherhood. Let's see. What else did he do on here? And I'm looking him up right now. He was in Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, he voiced the character named Atsuka Shima. He was also in Yu Hakusho. And that's basically it. And yeah, he's still an interesting character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just like in the manga, the characters were punished by their punishment was not allowing them to reap all the fame and glory for the feet the stain the hero killer. All the glory went to Endeavor because he's a pro hero. Despite the fact that um, it took Deku, Endeavor's own son, and Ingenium just to beat the hero killer, and it took them roughly three episodes, but they finally beat him. Heck, a lot of pro heroes were shocked the fact that three rookies, three people who are not even licensed yet, three students defeated a mass, defeated a serial killer. Which I'm like, wow, that's actually quite interesting. I can't think of a of a series where you have it where the main character along with two other characters defeating a serial killer. Yeah, and of course this the, the, this this does play in the part in the next arc, the. Uh, a little bit of the final, not much final exams, but this played the part of the start of the forest training arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, final exams just set up for the next arc. That's really the whole point of this particular arc. And this telling, yeah, the last arc of season three, of season two only takes up five episodes. Yep, the verse hero killer arc that took up exactly eight episodes. The first arc was twelve. Yeah, the first arc was 12, though they did kind of wrap up. Yeah, for the first arc, which took up the first 12 episodes, next 8 was Verse Hill Killer, and then Final Exams took up pretty much the last 5 episodes of the season. It wasn't very long, but it did accomplish basically setting up the next arc. Now, here's the interesting thing about the start of the current season. Yeah, the first episode was filler. Yep, it was a filler episode where... Like, okay, you have the characters playing some suits. Okay, you're probably thinking, do the characters go to the beach? No, they don't go to the beach at all. They go to they go to a swimming pool. Yep, and you're probably, and uh, I'm just, I'm along with the, like a lot of guys. Heck, I mean, even with the the guy who's uh the guy the guy who does a pop off thing. Matt Mac, do I think his name is? Yeah, he's one of the characters from the one day class. who's a pervert. Let's see if I can find him here. He is. Grape Juice, yeah, he's voiced by 
Oh yeah, it's the guy who is the woman who voices Tony Tony Chopper from One Piece. Yeah, he wanted to see all the girls wearing, you know, bikinis. I was kind of expecting that too. Instead, we got One Piece suits. They kind of look like something from the, I don't know, the uh, early 1900s. Yeah, it was really bizarre seeing that. Yeah, and it was all for endurance training. Yep. Now, aside from, well, vo voicing uh, Tony Tony Chopper from One Piece, she also voiced Juvia from Fairy Tale. Yep, the woman with the blue hair. Yep, same same voice actor. I think she also did one of her, I think she also did Hunt, uh, Hunter x Hunter as well. I'm looking at her. No, I thought she did my mistake, but yeah. She was also in the original film of series, which I haven't watched yet, which I'll probably watch in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only reason why the guys got there because they heard that the girl was going to be doing some swimming, so they decided to sign up for endurance training until 5 o'clock, which, yeah, and then and then they finally have it to where Deku, um, the, the guy who's kind of like uh, the show's version of a trust because he's always angry, and Endeavor's son about to do like a, a race instead of who's the best one at like this meter dash or swimming. And they get cut up by, by a racer hero. By a racer head. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're about to go and they all drop in the water. It's it's the most hilarious thing. It's like, okay, what'd you do that for? It's five o'clock. Time to go. Okay, fine. And then start with next episode, they go to the training gym. Now before they ended season two, they did that one episode, one chapter, which I remember this one from the manga, when Turner met, met up with Deku at the mall because they decided to go go shopping at the mall before they went camping, which brilliant idea. You don't see this very often. An episode where the characters go shopping. I don't have a problem with this at all. I think in one piece this was a recurring joke in the series, a lot of the girls go shopping. Let's see. Um, One Piece news occasionally. I know they do this in New Hakushu or any, a lot of the other anime reviewed. Let's see. I No, they didn't do this in for sure, Kenshin. No, it was mainly just Bleach, One Piece, this show, and... Yeah, I think that's it. You know the episode where the characters hang out at a mall? Yeah, also, first anime I've watched... Well, that's actually a patient of a modern manga, not something from the 90s or 80s. That actually has... I should point this out. I can't. I forgot to mention this in the last episode. It's the first anime to have cell phones. Not, not, not just any cell phones. Smartphones. Yep, all the characters got smartphones. Which, yeah. I got handed to this show and the manga. This was a brilliant joke of genius. Because it's made recently... So, why not include cell phones? I mean, yes, they had cell phones on Hunter x Hunter and Sailor Moon Crystal. Fine. Whatever. But they were but they were pushed to modern day, despite the fact that mangas were started out in the 1990s. Though, Baruto has got cell phones right now. Uh, Bleach just have flip phones. Yeah, a lot of the series are set in, like, modern day. That's not set recently. Usually, the common phone you usually see in these shows, like... like Besides Bleach, Death Note, uh, Bashir Rugen, you see flip phones, not smartphones. The only show I can think of besides this one to use probably a smartphone, excuse me, off the top of my head is probably, no, not Bashir Rugen, probably maybe Sailor Moon Crystal. I know that Hunter x Hunter didn't use because they had because they use those different cell phones. Which, by the way. I did hear recently that the Beetle phone that, that Gon uses, I hear that that is going to be made to an actual phone in real life, which, not a bad idea to do. It's the first time I can think of where they based a phone off something from an anime, even though that when it comes to flip phones, we wouldn't have that if it wasn't for Star Trek, the original series with their communicators. Yep. But the smartphones, really struck a genius. But it's the first series to utilize this, and I gotta love the fact that animes nowadays are allowing characters to use smartphones. Why not? They're frequently seen all over the place, so why not show in this series? Though in the current arc, uh, Deku's phone gets destroyed because of a battle he has with one of the villains. Which they, they, they do introduce new villains in the current arc. Yeah, in the current arc, they introduce a few new villains. Let's see if I can find them here. They introduce... 
Uh, let's see if I can find them here. Let's see, you have... Well, the Warp Gate Hero, yeah, he was already introduced in Season 1. But here's the, 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 the new ones. There is Dobby, who's voiced by Jason Labert, I think his name is. Yeah, let's see. I'm not familiar with this guy at all. No. If any of you are familiar with this guy... Oh, yeah, he the only character I remember this guy voices is Rob Lucci from One Piece. Aside from that... Oh, yeah, he's also the guy who voices Champa from Dragon Ball Super. Aside from that, that's really... Those of you who are fans of this guy... Um, no offense, but aside from a couple of shows, I've never really seen this guy in anything else. Leah Clark, yes. She voices the girl in the in the sailor outfit. Yep. Yeah. These are the characters who I've seen her in. She voiced Blair, who is also a shapeshifting cat from Soul Eater. Let's see. I remember her in a few other series I can She was Marin in DBZ. She was in Dragon Ball which I have watched that series. And no, I still have no plans to do a review of it. Let's see here. She voiced um, Paula and a uh, few of the characters from One Piece. Usually it's minor characters from One Piece. I know she was also in Naruto. Yeah, she was the... Up the top of my head, I believe she was, she was the second voice actress who voiced Anko. Yeah, second voice actor. She was in Tokugou Route A for like one episode. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm not saying anything else on here. I know she was in Naruto because I looked her up because if you look up basically Anko online, uh, the, the the character, she has two different voice actors. Lee Clark took over for her uh, during the last couple seasons of the original Naruto show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think, yeah, they have this muscular guy who can expose his muscles. Yeah, and he's actually got a connection to a character they introduced in this very arc. Now, there was these three mountain rescuers who know as the Wild Wild Pussycats. Yep, comprised of three women and a guy and the son of, well, uh, two superheroes known as the Water Hose Heroes who were killed by this muscular guy who's got a, a artificial eye and he and he recognized it right away because of the description he remembers from TV. He's like, you killed my parents. He's like, yeah, and you want revenge on him? So Deku protects him. Yeah, and Deku couldn't bother and even go 100% against him. Couldn't beat him, so he went a million percent just to beat the guy. Also, it destroyed his arm. Now, I'm sure he's going to get healed anyways. But, yeah. The, the the current arc, which in the anime, with the exception of the first episode, it's only three episodes in, and it feels like they're like halfway through the arc so far. And the arc itself is only just 14 chapters, and it feels like they're about halfway through the arc in just three episodes, which isn't too bad. So, in the case of the current arc they're adapting right now, my personal guess is they'll probably wrap it up either by episode 44 or episode 45. And also I've heard for this current season, it's going to be 25 episodes. Not much else to say about this particular show. Otherwise, though, it's great. I highly recommend people who are fans of superheroes. And people who are fans of the, of the Funimation dub work. Yeah, people who are fans of Funimation dubbing, I do recommend this series. Now, the first episode I was able to find dubbed. At first, and later on, I did find dub. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I'm sure it's not much different from the actual sub. But, yeah. And this is something quite unusual for this series and Tokyo Re. The dub is already out, even though that it's already released online by Funimation. Even though that the dub is not aired here yet. Yeah, I think it's not going to air until May. But their Funimation is releasing the dub early for this series and Tokyo Re. I think they might, I don't know if they might do the same thing for Attack on Titan Season 3, which I have heard is going to start up this coming July. And yes, I am still planning on watching the newest OVA. I'm going to watch that um, in the future, along with reviewing new, the, the newest chapter of the manga, which I have read it. It's a good chapter, but I'll get my thoughts on a future video. But I really wanted to do this video because... I was originally planning on doing this, like, just do Season 2 and then next video Season 2. But I figured, though, I've already finished both Season Ups. Why not do on one video? But, 
let me know all your thoughts on My Hero Academia Seasons 2 and 3. I know my friend Tivy is a huge fan of this series. Uh, Captain Awesome, uh, Captain, uh, yeah, I think it's Captain Awesome, I think. It, yeah, Captain Awesome, Awesome Universe. He loves the series as well. My friend Edgar got me onto the series. Thank you, Edgar, for getting me onto the series because I freaking love this series. Now, I just finished up Vampire Night. I just finished the manga today, so that'll be the next anime I start up. I probably won't start up to probably this weekend at the latest. Yeah, I'll probably get a chance to watch it and maybe do a review of it this weekend because it's only a couple seasons, so I expect only two videos for that particular series. Yeah. So overall, good one. So like with One Piece, Barto, and Tokyo Re, expect weekly reviews of this particular series. Alright, so that's it for this particular view. Stay tuned when I get a chance to episode 3, which I'll talk about the two OVAs and the 181st chapter of the One Piece, of the of the Why Hero Academia manga. Um, that'll be soon, uh, maybe tomorrow is the latest, but the next next thing I plan on doing is a couple of comic corners. And I'm going to do my, my, my review of the newest episode of One Piece and the newest chapter of One Piece, which... Yeah, the thing has been spoiled online, but I got a chance to review before I, before I got a chance to see the spoilers. But look enough, people actually put spoiler tags when it comes to, you know, their own thoughts in these particular chapters. I'm glad the fact they do that. They're not stupid. And say, yeah, spoiler review, and yet don't tell anybody it's a spoiler review. Yep. So, until I see you in the next video, bye.